It's Sunday, which means it's recap time here on the Retirement Quick Tips podcast. The theme this week was the best investment accounts for grandchildren, according to me. And in case you missed any of the episodes, we talked about some of the more popular accounts that are out there that you can fund and save and invest earmark for different purposes, depending on what your goals are and what you would like to do and how you want to help your grandchildren in the future. So I talked about why the 529 account for college or qualified education expenses, why that is my favorite account for grandchildren. In fact, for my own children, all four of them have 529 accounts. And I've been very intentional, my husband and I, about funding those accounts for college. So go back and listen to that because I made the case for why you would want to consider a 529 account. But for if for some reason, education and saving for education is not a priority for you, that's not the only game in town. Okay, so I talked about trust accounts, which on the surface, you may be tempted to dismiss them, especially if you don't have millions and millions of assets. A lot of people think that these are for high net worth people only. That is not true. Trust accounts are powerful tools, especially if you want to maintain flexibility and control, which is very important when you're giving money to heirs, future heirs, grandchildren. We don't want to give them full access and control over the money in most cases. I also talked about how you can maintain control by not actually setting up another account, but just by doing future gifting. And I think a lot of people maybe make it more complicated than it needs to be. But I would be willing to venture that most of you listening aren't intending to give over the annual gift limit anyways. And so if that's the case, then a strong case could be made for you can maintain the control by keeping the assets in your name and then just doing gifting later. Maybe not the most tax efficient one, but certainly a good option depending on your goals and how much you're intending to gift. And then I talked about using just plain vanilla minor or custodial accounts for grandchildren. These come in a few different flavors. However, one of the biggest drawbacks is once that child each reaches the age of majority, they get to use the money for whatever they want. And I have seen that play out in not great ways. And then lastly, yesterday, I talked about giving your grandchild a incredibly early start on retirement with a Roth for kids or a custodial Roth. This is a great option if helping to save for their retirement, which is if when they're like two years old, you're like not really thinking about retirement. We're like, let's handle college first or maybe try to help them with the down payment on their first house, like one step at a time. But if your priority is saving for retirement, the Roth for kids or a custodial Roth is a powerful tool. I would say the most important takeaway from this week is there are lots of options to give your grandchildren, give to them for certain things, whether that's earmarked or just gifting in general, and doing so in a very tax efficient way. So you can help a lot of grandparents that I talk to, a lot of clients of mine who are grandparents, they really want to help. It's, it's an important goal of theirs to help with college or down payment on a home or help out with a wedding. These are things that we want to think about them in advance and like, what are your priorities when it comes to gifting? How much control and flexibility do you want to maintain? How important is it for you to help save for college for your grandchildren? So based on your goals, how much you want to give, then you want to start doing some homework. Make sure that your lifetime gifting and what you're doing isn't creating disordered incentives or worse gives that minor unrestricted access to the funds as soon as they reach adulthood. I think most people would agree that that is not good for the vast majority of young people who might receive large and substantial gifts or access to funds. All right, tomorrow I'm starting a brand new theme. I'm actually answering your listener questions. I had an office hours pick my brain recently and I got some great questions. And so I'll be featuring those and answering those on the podcast because chances are some of these, they apply to many of you. And I love getting these questions because I I get to hear directly what's on your mind. You know, it's one thing for me to, I might read articles or come across something or a situation with a client that kind of spurs my thinking and say, oh, that would be a great podcast theme. But it's another to kind of go through some of these questions and case studies and explain and answer those. So I'll be doing that on the podcast next week. Thank you so much for listening this week. If you are enjoying the podcast, please share the show. Be sure to follow or subscribe if you haven't done so already. And if you have your own burning question about retirement, check out my website, truenorthra.com. In the upper right-hand corner, 
there is a little link you can click on to schedule a call with me. It's a free 15 minute phone call. You pick a, your preferred date and time, you schedule that, and we can have a conversation about whatever is on your mind regarding your own retirement. I love hearing from listeners of the show. And it's a great way for you to kind of get some direction and guidance on maybe something that might be top of mind related to your own retirement right now. So you can check out my website for that, truenorthra.com. Thank you so much for sharing the love and spreading the word. I hope you have a blessed Sunday. My name is Ashley Mitchake, and this is the Retirement Quick Tips Podcast.